The user interface for this app will be made of three main SwiftUI views. I have a navigation stack showing the word they're spelling from. I have a text field showing where they can enter their current answer, plus a list with all the answers they've entered in previously. For now, every time a user enters a word into the text field, we'll just add it to the list of used words. Later though, we'll add some validation to make them sure the word hasn't been used before. It can actually be produced from the root word they're spelling from as actually a real word, and not just some random letters they've typed in. Let's start with the basics. We need an array of words they've used, we need a root word for them to spell from, and a string we can bind to for a text field. So in our content view, we'll add three properties for that. We'll say at state, private var, our used words is an array of string. Then we'll do at state, private var, root word is an empty string. And at state, private var, new word is an empty string. Now, as for the body of the view, we're gonna start off as simple as possible. A navigation stack with root word for its title, then a couple of sections inside a list. So I'll say, well, a navigation stack here, with a list inside, then a section containing just the text field where they type in their own word. So I'll say, text field, enter your word, with text bound to dollar new word. It's crazy. <laughs> there we go. That's our first section. Second section will be for each used words with an ID of self. Give me the word coming in. I'll do text of word. Like so. Then add a title at the top, like this. Let's do a root word, like so. Now, we're using id of backslash dot self to say each word in our used words array will be unique. This will cause problems if there are duplicate words in there, but soon enough, we're disallowing that won't be a problem in the final game. Now, this text field here has a problem. We can type text into there, but we can't then submit that. There's no way to say, add an entry to our list of used words. To fix that, we'll add a new method called add new word down here. This will lowercase the current new word string, then remove any white space. We'll then check it has at least one character inside, otherwise we'll exit. Then we'll insert, the, insert that at position zero in our used words array and set new word back to be an empty string. Later on, like I said, we'll add some validation to check the words allowable, but for now, this is straightforward. We'll do func add new word. Step one, we'll lowercase and trim the word. So I'll say our answer is our new word, dot lowercase, dot trimming characters in, white spaces, and new lines. This means we can't add words that are just the same words before, but with some case difference, for example, or an extra space on the end or whatever, not allowed. Then we'll exit if the remaining string is empty. We wanna make sure there's at least one character inside here. We can write guard answer.count is greater than zero, else return. So if we're still here, it means at least one character in that string. Then we'll do some extra validation to come for later on. And finally, used words dot insert that answer at position zero and clear new words back to be an empty string. Now we want to call add new word whenever the user presses return on their keyboard. And SwiftUI has a modifier just for that called on submit. We can put that somewhere into our view hierarchy and it could be uh, directly on the button. It could be below this navigation title. doesn't matter. It'll still work when any text is submitted. Now on submit has to be given a function that accepts no parameters and returns nothing at all, which exactly matches this add new word method which is added here. And we can pass that straight to on submit. We can say on submit run add new word. Run the app now. Give it a try, I'll press command R. You should, 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 should see even, things are slowly coming together. And here I can type hello, return, and then uh, world return. Okay, 
it's working correctly. Now I have obviously the soft keyboard disabled, I can use a hardware keyboard. If I press uh, Shift Command K, it'll activate the on-screen keyboard. Our return will work here too. So if I do hello again, like this, boom, and then return, same thing. Anyway, now we have used in here, uh, insert at zero for a reason. We could have used use words append answer, but then new words used to spell would appear at the end of the list as they're added and would therefore likely be off the screen. But by inserting words at the start of the array, they'll automatically appear at the top of the list, which is much easier to see what they've just done. Now, before we put a title actually up here in the navigation bar, I'm gonna make two small changes to our layout. First, when we call add new word down here, you can see it lowercases the word here, which is helpful. If they write the word car, C-A-R, lowercase, and then car, C-A-R, capital C, or car, C-A-R, all capitals, they're not the same, they're not, they're not different words, the same word, car, car, car each time, just with case differences, that ignores them. It correctly locates it no matter what. However, if you look in practice, when I'm typing, I type world here, I'll just type in directly W-O-R-L-D, it auto capitalizes the very first letter for us, which is not what you want. To fix this, we want to disable capitalization with a different modifier. Uh, up here in our text field, you're gonna see, if we look for dot auto here, you'll see we have uh, text input auto capitalization. It's a long one, but it's right there. There's a very similar one, auto capitalization style. It's marked, don't use this one, that's why it's grayed out. This is uh, deprecated, being removed in the future. You've got this longer one here, text input auto capitalization. Select that and give it the value of dot never. Do not capitalize anything. And now I run the app again, we should see up here, I can type hello, and it's all now lowercase no matter what. So it matches what we actually see in the list, which is nicer. The second thing we're gonna change, and just because we can quite frankly, is to use the SF symbols icon set built in to iOS. We saw this previously. Because SF symbols includes numbers and circles for all numbers zero through 50. You can say x.circle.fill, so zero.circle.fill, one.circle.fill, 20.circle.fill, and so forth. Now in this uh, app, we'll be showing eight letter words to the user, and you'll try and rearrange those to spell different kinds of words. So the longest they can handle is eight letters. As a result, we can safely use the SF symbol number circle set just fine. We know that all lengths are covered. And so we can wrap this uh, for each texting here, this current row here, text, with a stack. We can say, do a stack here, the text inside, and next to that place, an image with a system name of, and I'm gonna use word.count.circle, like so. So count the letters in the word and use that with the circle version of the icon. And now, I press Command R, we should see when I type in hello, we get five next to it. So it's a five letter word. So it's clearer how well they're doing at a glance, which is nice. Now, if you wanted to, we could add one sneaky little extra tweak in here. Because right now, if I add words like uh, world up here, boom, it just appears in the list directly. We could animate that. We could say, uh, for used words insert at. I'll wrap that line of code with with animation, like so. A small, small change. They're saying to iOS, please animate what's inside these braces here. Animate inserting into the array. As a result, when we run the code back now, if I add hello, it fades in. If I add world, it kind of slides in. Nice. <laughs> now we haven't looked at animations just yet and that's okay, we'll look at them much more shortly. But that change alone is a lovely improvement, it makes the words slide in much more nicely.